So you can see in the top left corner of the screen that we're at about 85 FPS right now. Starfield doesn't support any kind of frame generation or anything, yet you can flick a button and turn it up to 156 FPS or 157. All of a sudden, we're doubling our frame rate, and yeah, it feels a lot smoother when I'm playing with it here. And this is a technology from AMD called AMD Fluid Motion Frames, otherwise known as AFMF, or what I like to call it, as mother But for the first time in a long time, we're actually seeing AMD come out ahead of Nvidia in terms of features, offering something that's completely different and unparalleled, adding at the very least competition to the market. And that's what we as consumers want to see because for the longest time, Nvidia has been sitting on top of their throne, basically untouchable in terms of features with ray tracing, DLSS, frame generation, all of this CUDA support, reflex technology. But all of a sudden, AMD has feeling like that, that they're catching up. But all of this doesn't matter if AFMF isn't good. So let's go ahead and check out all of the pros and cons, break it down in depth in this video. Let's jump in. What AFMF does is actually at the driver level of any 7000 series graphics card from AMD, then you can flick a switch and it will use frame generation to double the frame rate, perceivably, of any DirectX 11 or DirectX 12 game. Now this does come at the cost of latency, just like any other frame generation technology does. You can see in the top left corner of the screen, just from using frame generation, we're adding about another 20 milliseconds of latency. So because it's integrated into the driver, yes, it does make a game feel smoother, but there's no way it doesn't have downsides. You can't just make a one size fits all solution and it just works for any single game that's out there. That's impossible. When you move the mouse quickly, so I'm like spinning around the mouse a lot, okay? You can see that it completely turns off in the top left corner. We went from 150 FPS to like 80 now, okay? But then if I stand still and just look at a straight line, it'll go up to like 160 again. Because it doesn't actually have access to the game's code, it doesn't know where things are moving. So when you move your mouse quickly, it would look so bad that AMD just decided to just turn it off. Yeah, that does kind of suck because it's probably when you would most want to have you know, more frames is when you were spinning around your mouse a lot. That is one downside of using this technology. However, this does come out worse in first person games like Starfield here because you have to move your mouse around a lot. But what's interesting about Starfield is we can actually go into third person. And in this mode, you can see a lot more things around you and you don't have to turn your mouse nearly as much in order to, you know, play the game properly. With normal camera movements and stuff, we're not seeing the FPS uh, drop nearly as far as we did when we were in first person. So you can get, you can take more advantage of AFMF when you're in a third person game. But it's not only that aspect where if you move your mouse too quickly that it turns off, but also AFMF has some problems with visual artifact. Unfortunately, because I'm on a single PC setup, I can't show you guys this. Whenever I record from internally and the same PC, it actually only records the base frame rate of the game. So that's why I want to bring you guys out of here and just kind of point the camera at the screen with 120 FPS and see if we can pick out some of these visual artifacts in these games and see if it is like too much to play with or anything like that. Okay, so we're in Starfield here. I'm recording at 1080p. So unfortunately it won't be as sharp, but it's at 120 FPS. So this might be able to display some of the issues that we can run with. You can see that we're up to like 150 FPS. You can see some small issues with it. So you can see with the HUD here, as I turn the mouse, way more distracting on this gun. So you can see like a ghosted image of it here. It's not absolutely unbearable, but it's something that you can definitely notice. Motion blur is not on right now, by the way. So any like motion, blurriness that you're seeing is because it's doing this. So you can see, especially when I'm running around, there's some more going on with the HUD there. And it can be especially more apparent if you go into first person when you really focus on things. But what's kind of funny is that there's like this range of how fast you can move your mouse. So like if you move your mouse too fast, you can see in the top left corner that it just turns off. But if you move your mouse, you know, just fast enough that you get visual artifacts, then you'll actually start to notice things. You can kind of eliminate this issue if you have certain scenarios. So let's go ahead and check this out in another game. So we're in Risk of Rain 2 now, and this might seem like a pretty random game to be testing this in. Like, oh, your FPS is already at like 300 because it's not that demanding. 
However, I want to show some things that come up with frame generation in a game where you do have a lot of FPS. Because what AFMF is doing is interpolating the frames in between two real frames. So that can really change, obviously, if you have a lot of frames. So we saw those visual artifacts in Starfield. Let's go ahead and turn on AFMF in Risk of Rain 2 here. You can see that we were at like 300 FPS and now we're at over 500. But you have to take into account because there's so many frames in between them, I'm not seeing like any artifacts with the HUD here. And it looks really good. I still think the latency is really great right now. We're at like 10 milliseconds of added latency. So yeah, this, this can make it a lot smoother. And in a game like this, I know it doesn't seem like that crazy, but in Risk of Rain 2, when you get to late game <laughs> and there's a lot of stuff going on on the screen, tons of effects and everything, your FPS can drop even with a higher end GPU like the 7800 XT, it can drop pretty dramatically. So um, this really can help you if you wanna keep your, your smoothness of your game up, especially at the late game. Apparently like 500 Hertz monitors are starting to come out right now. And you know, with AFMF on, we can get over 500 FPS, which means that you could use the full refresh rate of your monitor, whereas we're at uh, like 300 here. Still very playable performance, not anything bad, but it's kind of a, an interesting use case. So it's also really interesting in Risk Rain 2 that I wanna show you guys. Now, you know, some games have a funny thing that a lot of us love to hate, and that is an FPS cap. In most games, you can manually do this as well. That's why I'm gonna display it here. I can visually see that it looks a lot less smooth with a 60 FPS cap in Risk of Rain 2 here. However, with AFMF, and you guys unfortunately can't see me doing this, but I just turned it on, and we're now at 120 FPS. That means that with AFMF, in any DirectX 11 or DirectX 12 game, you can get around an FPS limit. And one of the main games that comes to mind, I would say, is probably Elden Ring. So not only is Elden Ring one of those games where you have a third person view, which is the best advantage for AFMF in general, but also Elden Ring has a 60 FPS cap. Now, a lot of you guys are probably gonna crucify me because I can't test that because I don't own Elden Ring and I probably should buy it at some point, but I haven't bought it yet. So you can use AFMF to get around FPS caps. That's awesome. Okay, so we're in Forspoken here. I know this isn't the most popular game, but it has a really cool feature that will be coming out to other games. That is FSR 3.0 frame generation. Now, what we can do is actually try to combine both the doubling effect of FSR 3 and the doubling frame effect of AFMF. So first, let's go ahead and turn on AFMF in this game. You can see that we were at like 80 FPS before and now we're at like, or maybe we're at like 70. And now we're at around 140. I can feel that there's a little bit more latency going on here, but I don't think it's that bad. It does look quite a bit smoother when it comes down to it here. Now, let's go ahead and turn on FSR 3.0. And yeah, the this is gonna be wild. You can see we're at 140 FPS before. Now we're at like 240. 240 FPS. And this goes pretty crazy. Now this can definitely be seen as cheating for the FPS and I wouldn't disagree. The game shouldn't really be this smooth. And there is a decent amount of latency from what I was able to find. But visually, what's interesting is that it doesn't look that bad. It's just the only thing is the latency so like i'm trying to like see like major issues obviously when you whip around the mouse faster it, you're gonna lose the afmf frames hopefully amd doesn't start advertising this or it'll, it'll be like oh you can you can have a base frame rate of 70 fps but if you turn on fsr performance mode then you can get up to 100 and then if you turn on afmf then you can get to you know 200 FPS, and then if you turn on FSR 3.0 frame generation, then you can get up to like 400. Hopefully they don't start advertising this. What is kind of nice about this, so yes, the latency is a little bit worse from my experience in my testing. However, you can also use 240 Hertz monitors kind of to their fullest potential. And again, that you realistically wouldn't be able to run that FPS anyways. So this gives you that option that otherwise wouldn't be available to you and it doesn't feel completely unplayable. Now, is it perfect? No, I wouldn't use this in a competitive multiplayer game ever. This this isn't meant for that, but in a single player game where, you, where smoothness can be really cool, 
This is honestly a pretty usable feature and you can see our FPS kind of hovering here. You guys can't see what these new generated frames actually look like except for the ones from FSR 3.0. You can't see what AFMF looks like, but man, it does feel pretty smooth and you're only seeing a 60 FPS video as well. Pretty crazy stuff. Let's go ahead and check another game too. What I really want to show you is that this game is famously like CPU limited. And you can see that our GPU is at like 90% right now. This is a 7800 XT. And then the CPU I have in this system is a 5800 X3D. So a very fast CPU. Let's go ahead and test out using like AFMF that can work in every game to get around a CPU limitation. Okay, so let's press this button, turn it on. And you can see that we went from like 100 FPS to 200 FPS. So in a game like this, and we're adding about 16 milliseconds of latency, because even though it's CPU limited, we can still get our FPS higher, which is a really cool scenario to be in. And does it look better? Now this is a, a, a good case for this game, for this uh, um, frame generation technology, because you actually don't move your mouse a whole lot in Spider-Man when it comes down to it. Spider-Man Miles Morales doesn't really have any HUD elements that are tracking your screen. So you actually don't run into that many issues. So if you're in a game where there isn't a distracting HUD, then honestly, it might be pretty good. I feel like the sides of his head are kind of like clipping away almost. You see that? There's some issues in motion, but man, overall it does feel smoother. Like this is something, it's adding about 20 milliseconds of delay. I don't think it feels bad whatsoever. In a single player game like this, it's kind of like a, why not use it? CPU limitations, you can get around them with this. Okay, so AFMF. It is a pretty freaking cool technology that is relatively niche, but can be really freaking powerful. So especially in games where you have an FPS cap, you can get past that with AFMF. I think that is great. You can make games that are capped at 60 FPS look a heck of a lot smoother. But third person games as well, you don't have to move the mouse as quickly. And that means that you could actually use this feature in it. As well, you get more advantages with AFMF the higher the base FPS is because the less difference between each frame, then that means that it doesn't have to interpolate as much data. That makes it really powerful if you want to like max out the refresh rate on a monitor, but you're, you're already starting at like 200 to 300 FPS. With that though, it does have its downsides. It can't like when you whip around the camera, it turns itself off. That's obviously a big downside that basically makes it unplayable with first person games, especially if you're at lower FPS. And that's the other part is the higher the FPS that you have, the better advantage you're going to get with the AFMF. And with the 7800 XT like us testing here today, it's a pretty fast graphics card and can usually hit that limit. But if you're on a lower end card, then you might not be able to get that. And that makes AFMF like a winning more type of thing. You already have to have a high base frame rate in order to get the best results with it. Then there's also artifacts to it and issues with the image quality. So it's not just like free frames or anything like that, I, especially when the FPS was lower to begin with, and then it was doubling after the fact that games can look a lot less sharp when it comes down to it. And that would make sense to me, but especially in cyberpunk here when on the benchmark run. Now that kind of makes it a toss up scenario. Do you want to use AFMF and get a less like sharp image or would you prefer the smoothness, but the, also the blurriness that comes with AFMF? That is like kind of a personal preference thing. Also, you get a little bit of latency with AFMF. It doesn't always that bad, especially if you're at a higher base frame rate. There's kind of a checklist you have to run down to see if it'd be good for whatever game that you're playing it with. But because it's compatible with every DirectX 11, every DirectX 12 game, that means that you can just kind of try it. You could just turn it on in the game, see if you like it. If you don't like it, just turn it off. And if you prefer to get more FPS by turning down settings or using upscaling instead, then this is just a feature that's just another option. And that is a good thing to have. We like options on PC. And we'll also see, because this is a preview driver, we're gonna have to see how AFMF like performs in the future. Is it gonna be compatible with more AMD GPUs down the line? I hope so, like I really hope so. And is it going to like get better visually? Who knows? I'm, I'm not 100% sure. And only time is gonna tell with that but it's in its very infancy stages and it's still looking pretty freaking good right now. And what's really interesting is Nvidia doesn't have this feature on their GPUs. Would this be something that Nvidia is gonna try to hop on too? Because this is a pretty cool feature. I don't think it's exactly going to sell AMD GPUs, 
but it has the potential to. Let me know what you guys thought about AFMF. Hopefully I was able to break down some things, especially with avoiding FPS caps in games and you know when you move things, the type of artifacts that you can see and visual bugs and stuff like that. Anyways, uh, that's been it for me. Hope you guys have a good one. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.